Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction on completing the task at hand. Visit my YouTube channel and watch my disclaimer video. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find the information you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. These Volvo 850s, every once in a while you'll run into one that the power seats recline, but they don't want to uh, go back up to the upright position or the recline feature just don't work at all. So I'm gonna dig into this and show you how this is repaired. Now the reason why the seat won't recline or, 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 or go upright, nine times out of 10, the motor works, but the cable inside the seat has slipped. It's supposed to have maybe a half inch out of the top and a half inch down by the motor, well, when that cable over the years works its way down, you may have three quarter of an inch down in the motor and only a quarter of an inch up top at the transmission. And because that has slipped down, it's not catching the transmission anymore. So you got to get the cable to re-engage with the transmission. These are the tools I use to fix the seat recliner on the 850. I got my torch, I got a quarter inch drive screwdriver set, short extension swivel, and the 8 millimeter. I got a flat tip screwdriver, needle nose pliers, and snips to get those hog rings loose. And if for some reason you have to take the seat out, you get your 3 8 inch ratchet drive with the short extension and the 14 millimeter uh, socket and a breaker to help you break those seat bolts loose. Whenever you're uh, putting these 850 seats back together, you'll also need 10 full length zip ties, not these little ones. I didn't have any big ones to show you, but get the full size zip ties. They're about 10 inches long and they're real thick. You'll need that to secure the seat back together. You can usually fix this uh, power seat back while it's still in the car. So first thing we want to do is take the lumbar support knob and remove it. Okay, to remove the lumbar support handle, you turn it out until it stops. Once it stops, you give it a nice tug and turn it again to get it the rest of the way out. Once you get that out, you just pull this piece off there. Now on the back of some of the 850s, they have this latch here that you pull a release up on. And once you pull a release up on, you can fold the seat back forward. So if you have that seat, you're fortunate. Go ahead and fold the seat forward and then it's easier to get to the next step. On the seat I'm gonna work on, I don't see those releases. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna go down to the hinge of the seat down here and I'm going uh, to take loose these uh, bull clips or whatever they call them. I'm going to pop all four of those loose across the bottom, four or five of them. Couldn't get a good grip on them with my needle nose, so what I did, I took a flat tip screwdriver, I pried it under the ring, turned it 180 degrees, and that got the clip where I can get it loose, so I had four of them across the bottom. Next thing you want to do is take the side of the uh, the vinyl loose from the seat so I'll have to release this side control here. As you can see this thing has an airbag in it. The airbag comes out of here if the triggers activated. So what you want to do is you want to pull up on this just jerk it up and then you want to unplug it so that you get some slack out of the cable. So I'm going to reach down here and unplug it. Now that I got the plug unplugged, I lift it up a little bit and I punch it back just a little bit. And now you can see the airbag trigger. If you knock that into this, it'll trigger that airbag. Scare the heck out of you. Sounds like a shotgun going off. So you get this side piece off. And on the inside of this side piece, there's a safety catch for this airbag trigger you place that in there so you don't accidentally trip that airbag and you get this out of the way now that the sap things out of the way you can pull this vinyl down and off of the side of the seat 
Caesar do with two hands. But basically it's caught it's caught in there. So let me set the camera down and uncatch that. Okay, the easiest way for me to get this vinyl off of this plastic down here was to roll my uh needle those pliers in there and then twist it and unroll it from there so now that the cover is not attached to the bottom of the seat anymore. Now that the hook rings are off the bottom and the sides are released, you want to peel the uh, skin of the seat up off of the uh, cushion. Now there's going to be a couple of rings on the way that you'll have to take loose as you go up. But just start at the front, work your way around, and, and peel it up. It only takes a few minutes, and you'll break those other clips loose as you get to them. So as I start peeling the skin up, you look down here, and you notice there's a clip ring there, and there's a clip ring on the other side, so I'm going to break those loose. And on the front, I need to probably come up to about right here, just under this first line. And then from the back, I'll access the uh, transmission and the cable where the repair will be done. Now, I've taken two sets of these rings loose on either side. Try not to pull this too hard, or you actually pull the wire through the phone. It looks like I could take one more loose to have easy access from the back. These rings are on the front and not on the back. Okay, I got three rows of clips loose, so I'm going to go to the back and show you how to fix it. Okay, this is the seat cover peeled up from the back side. And over here, here's the transmission. Right on top of the transmission, there's a couple of bolts. They look like maybe 8 millimeters, so I'm going to go ahead and remove those two bolts because that will release the cable that's going through the top of it. Now, if you want to get the seat back cushion out of your way a little bit, there's a hook right here. You can release that hook from its holder and pull the cover out a little bit. You'll need a swivel or something or a little adjustable jaw wrench. I'm sorry, a little boxing wrench to get to this one, and they are 8 millimeter. Okay, after you got both of those screws out, you lift this bracket up and get it off the cable. Get your cable out. Now, as you see, when I pulled the cable out, it's not showing any tip of the cable sticking out of there. And that's not good. That's probably why it's not catching in the transmission. So, even though I didn't have any experience with this uh, seat, this one probably wasn't reclining. So, next thing you want to do is get your little lighter or torch and heat this up until it melts off of the end of this tip here. Let me see if I have my little lighter torch with me. This little uh, handheld torch uh, helps you direct flame real good when heating up parts. It's got a little safety catch on top. You pull the trigger down the side of it and you see it's got a nice little blue flame that comes off of there. I use this to heat the uh, end of the cable when working on these uh, seat cables on these 850s and 960s. Take a standard cigarette lighter, slide it up in there. Then you take the base of the handle and slide it together. And now you got the torch ready to use. Okay, I didn't have my lighter torch with me, but what you do is you heat up this plastic sleeve and with a pair of pliers, you go ahead and pull the sleeve off. Now, once the sleeve comes off, you'll see the tip of the cable. Now, that's not enough tip in the cable to stick down in that motor. So, you could do one of two things. One, you can pull it out a little bit so that it begins to grab again. But what I would suggest you do is cut about a quarter of an inch off of this cable. So let me go ahead and cut this off so I can show you what I mean. Now this is the cable barely coming out of the sleeve. You can grab it with a pair of pliers or even with your finger and pull it out further. So 
you could pull it out further. The further you pull it out, now you're pulling it out of the motor. You push it back in, now it's in the motor. Now you can plug that seat switch in and activate the seat switch and see if this turns to make sure that it's sticking in the motor. But what I normally do is I pull it out about a half inch like this and then I cut about that much of the plastic off with a razor blade. Once I cut that off, now I have instead of a half inch, I have three quarters inch. Then I take the sleeve, heat the sleeve back up and slide the sleeve back over the end of the cable so that the sleeve is all the way down to there inside the the cable plastic the way it's supposed to be. That way I got that much of the tip of the cable sticking out. A quarter of an inch to a half an inch of the cable actually sticking out of it. Then I guide it back into the transmission. So let me go ahead and do that. So just to repeat myself, you heat up this metal sleeve. Now it's hot. Now you grab it with uh, needle nose pliers or something while you're heating it. Then you slide it over this plastic cable until it comes down to this bump in the cable so that it's all the way secure. Now I got that much of the cable sticking out. Now I'm going to thread that in the motor and secure it back in place with the bracket. So I got the cable back in the transmission. Now I'm going to put the bracket on. Now that you got both bolts tightened all the way down and the cable is secure inside the transmission, go ahead and test it. Make sure it works. Alright, now that you know that it's worked, you want to go ahead and take this uh, piece of the backing and hook it back into the clip that you pulled it out of with some needle nose pliers. Now you can start peeling the uh, seat cover back down on the seat and what I do on the front side of it where I had those hog clips or whatever they're called I put uh, thick zip ties so make sure you have uh, three six and four zip ties to put your seat back together so you need ten zip ties if you fail to put those zip ties along the front edge of the seat, uh, your seat's not going to sit flat and pulled in good against the cushion the way it looked. Or if you pull these through the cushions, the, the, the cushion, the seat cover won't sit tight against the seat either. So you don't want to pull these out of the cushions and you want to zip tie this uh, seat cover back down. If you fail to put those zip ties along the front edge of the seat, uh, your seat's not going to sit flat and pulled in good against the cushion the way it looked. Or if you pull these through the cushions, the, the, the cushion, the seat cover won't sit tight against the seat either. So you don't want to pull these out of the cushions and you want to zip tie this uh, seat cover back down. After you get your seat cover down and secure, you want to go ahead and hook your controls back behind the... Uh, the seat bar there and as you can see it has a little hook that hooks on the back of that bar so you get down oh, that down over that bar and get it hooked into place then you go ahead and pull your safety out of that clip that back on the inside of this seat tab where it goes so you don't lose it Once you get that clip back in the seat uh, part the way it's supposed to be, you go ahead and put your cord down over where it needs to be, set this in place, and knock it down. Now that's locked in place, your seat's plugged up, and everything should work. Alright, once you're putting the seat back together, put that sleeve back over it. It only goes in one way. Then you uh, work your knob in until it catches you push it and turn it it turns real hard once it goes in a little bit you have to push it and turn it again
to get it the rest of the way in, then it's set. Now if you look closely, you'll see the seat move as I move the lumbar handle. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.